Our next speaker truly is an advertising genius. And the reason I know that is I've actually seen her work at work. And it's amazing what she's been able to do for a couple of different really big sellers. Uh, she's dedicated her life to helping entrepreneurs grow their business through advertising. And in 2016, she focused only on Amazon. And she's been able to do some crazy things. And she's even been able to help our Amazon sellers compete in some of the very top, most competitive markets you will find on Amazon. So let's have a great big warm welcome for our next speaker, the urban cowgirl herself, Cherie Yvette. Oh man, super excited. <laughs> Who's gonna grab who? All right, thanks guys. Okay, so today we're gonna talk about advertising. That's what I do. And it's, it's a bit like stopping a moving train with Amazon, right? It's moving at top speed, and the speed is driven pretty much by keyword searches. So it's, you've got all these shoppers coming to Amazon every single day, and they're searching for their products, sometimes a million searches a minute. So for you to, the fastest way for you to grow your business is to step in front of those shoppers as fast as possible and as frequently as possible. So the way you're gonna do that is through advertising. So there's a lot of different ways to grow your business, but advertising is unique in the fact that it puts you right in front of the shopper, right at the time they're looking to buy. So I'm sure not too many of you guys have a lot of experience with uh, train robbing. So I have had about 30,000 hours of pay-per-click experience, and I'm not an Amazon seller. I only do advertising, and I only do it at scale in competitive markets. So it's one of those things that it's, you get an instinct for it over time, but what I'm going to teach you here today, it will shorten your learning curve, and you can apply it quickly to your business, and it will ensure that you have fast success. So let's kind of look at a few train robberies that I've pulled off and are still in motion. So this is an ad campaign. All the campaign results I'm going to show you are about over about 18 months, total spend, total sales. So this account, we spent about a million dollars in ad spend, and we've made about four million in sales. And that's pretty interesting. But the thing with Amazon, is we've made closer to 40 million in sales, right? Because the ads power sales velocity, and the sales velocity wins organic rank, and when you win organic rank, well, the game's yours. So a lot of people will talk to you about competitive markets and kind of steering clear of competitive markets. I'm the opposite. I kind of like to jump into competitive markets and then I see dollar signs, and we like to take those sales. So if you can kind of see the red arrows, the ad campaigns launched up there in 2016. So we jumped to about a million dollars in sales. Every time I launched an initiative, we just kept growing. This is off of one ASIN. Three million, three million, right? Not so bad, it's a pretty big train. So sometimes you may be looking at it and you think you have all the money in the safe and there is a whole lot more to be had because Amazon is amazing, even to me, how much you could pull out of these accounts. So another one, a good example, about 950K in ad spend, ran about three million in ad sales. Again, the bottom line, huge lift. But what you want to look at in this one is you want to look at how each of those red arrows, how we just kept going and going, and look at how much total sales increased. We never stopped pushing the ads. We never stopped pushing for more rank, more position, more sales, more market share. So if you come at this, you know, we started like 239K, we ran to 500,000. From there, it went to 516. And then look what we did last month, 843,000 total sales. So outlaw tip number one, never attribute your ad spend to your ad sales, attribute it to your total sales. Because if you start looking at ad spend to ad sales, you're going to get frugal and you're going to start thinking you're not making any money 
and you're going to lose all this back end. Okay, here's another account, and this is nothing that I teach, but you'll notice that ACOS up there is pretty high. I mean, it doesn't stop us from still making a ton of money, but it takes some of our money, and that's because one of our best-selling products only has four stars. I don't do anything with reviews, but I can tell you it will cost you money if you have four stars. Things happen along the road, and you can't prevent it, maybe, but do everything you can to get those reviews up, because that's what's going to power your ACoS and your ad spend and make it profitable for you, is making sure that those numbers, those reviews are what's going to push where you get more money and more sales out of the ad dollars. This is another good one, because working with these guys, I didn't come in until later, advertising at scale. You see the first arrow there, Prime Day, 2017. And you'll see, by the time we started getting traction right for holiday, we were able to double the numbers. But more importantly, they held. So we got huge velocity at holiday, $800,000 a month, and then it never dropped. All powered by advertising. That's the only thing different in these campaigns is the advertising. The accounts were the same when I started. OK, so now I'm going to show you guys how to do it. We're going to start by staging the robbery. After that, we're going to hold up the train. After that, we're going to blow the safe. OK, with advertising, it's a little bit different, again, because with advertising, you kind of jump right in close with your competitors. You know, I mean, everybody, again, it's smart to pick things that aren't competitive, but if you do pick something that's competitive, this is how you take the market, right? There's a lot of money in those markets, so don't be super scared of your competition. Every time you see your competitors selling a whole bunch of money in the BSR, you should look at that as money that you can take from their product pages, because that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. OK, so you got three components to your ad campaign, three components. you got to start with a bold strategy. you got to make small bets, and then you got to make big moves. Now, the reason this is a circle is because if you look at advertising as linear, if you come at your campaigns as a straight line, you're going to run an ad, you're going to sell some products, you're going to make some money, you're going to fall flat on your face. Essentially, it's circular because you've got the market, you've got the competition, you've got all this stuff moving around, the algorithm that you're not in full control over, so you need to take it as a feedback loop. That's what this is. You will put the ads live and you'll see what happens and you'll look at your results. So put some small bets out on the platform, see how it works, bring it back around, and then make big moves. If you're having trouble right now with your advertising, if you're in this room and you're already doing it, your bets aren't small enough, your moves aren't big enough, or your strategy is not bold enough. Advertising is not for playing small. OK, 80-20 principle. With advertising, 20% of what you do will make all your results. 80% of what you do will not work at all. So if you're running an ad campaign right now and you're frustrated, that's pretty normal. 80% of what you do will not work. On my best day, 70% of what I do works. And the 20% or 30% that sticks, well, you saw the numbers. OK, now with Amazon, this is why competition is exciting in advertising. So exciting. Because you're not creating new markets, and you're not creating new categories. You know, I'm sure you guys have all used like the Jungle Scout tool, and you pull product sales velocity. You should look at that tool. That's just money that you need to take. I'm being serious. I take it every day. That's where you see my numbers grow. Your competitor's sales are, are the sales available in the category. You're simply going to move those sales to your product pages, right? So don't be scared of the competition. You're going to ambush the competition. OK. Staging the robbery. OK, so stage the robbery, we got to have a good strategy. This is the wild bunch, legendary outlaws. Not, not your average criminal, right, for the 1900s? OK, the train. So the train is those keywords. Our first thing is we're going to tackle our keywords. We're going to fight for our keywords, and we're going to win. So here is the takeaway about keywords. The algorithm matches products to keyword searches in real time. And this is out of the mouth of babes. I work with the guys inside Amazon every single day on campaigns every single week. So what happens is when that algorithm 
sees a keyword, it goes out, and it says what products sell best for this keyword, right? So keyword by keyword, 20% of your keywords will produce 80% of your sales. You cannot secure organic rank. You cannot rank your products just with sales velocity alone. You can get small wins that way, get your products up there, get up into the search results, things can get moving and shaken. But the second you drop off, the second you stop doing that trick, everything will drop off as well. Advertising is consistent. It puts you there every single day. You lock and you hold and you stay steady. So the thing is, you can't do it with just sales velocity. You have to think about your keywords because that Amazon algorithm is going to be matching the keyword searches to sales history for every product in real time. Every keyword, every product. So if you have a product that has no sales history on a keyword, where are you going to show up? Nowhere. If you have a product and you're bidding on that keyword every single day, always showing up, always selling on that keyword, well, they're going to show it a lot more. So it's keyword by keyword. That's the trick. The trick is not to think about why are you advertising or how are you going to drive velocity at this point in the game. At this point in the game, you want to pick your keywords, and that's how you're going to win. OK, so we're going to establish sales history for our most important keywords. How do we do that? OK, we're going to start. There's three ways that you pick your keywords. First, you pick the keywords that you see most frequently in the best-selling titles. So you're looking at the titles of all, all, the, all the people that you think are competitors, and you say, OK, what keywords are always showing up in these titles? Those are your first set of keywords. Second set of keywords, keywords with sales volume. Right? Keywords that have enough sales volume to make an impact in your sales history. Now, the third set is the most valuable. Those are your relevant keywords. And this is not that general kind of search marketing relevance thing. It's more about what keywords are relevant to your product. Which keywords describe your product specifically and give you differentiation from other products in the market so you get buyer preference and people are most likely to buy, right? So you want to pick your keywords based on the ones that are distinct to your product when you're starting. So here's a good example. So you get an example of how this works in action. So we kind of have short tail, real short general keywords, and then we have the mid tail, right? These are more like, these are the keywords that are really good. These are keywords that have what I call a modifier. So they come in and they say they want red, they want black, they want paisley. They want cotton, right? At this point, that's a far more interesting search than just bandana. So you're going to see a ton of sales volume, a ton of search volume on bandana. But when you're trying to win early, you're going to get more conversions and sales for your ad dollars off of the reds and the blacks and the paisleys if it distinctly describes your product. Now, your third thing is the long tail. Those you discover over time with your reports through the feedback loop. But you start right here in the mid tail. Here's an example of how good the mid-tail gets. OK, so if you look at this campaign, see the sales, see the numbers. Every red arrow, the only thing different in those campaigns is I have one single unique modifier in each one. That's it, one word. It's all that's different in those campaigns. Right? It's how you break it down. Start in the mid-tail. OK, so this is Butch Cassidy, and he was the brains behind the Wild Bunch. So the reason you start in the mid-tail is because if you're going to pick a fight, you have to win, right? Especially in advertising, you're putting real money on the line. So if you're going to come in there, you want to be sure that you put your best foot forward and you start on those keywords that are especially relevant for your product. All right. Now we're going to hold up the train. This part's really fun. This is where everyone else will get kind of freaked out about competition, and they're going to talk about competition as a scary thing. I think competition is a pretty normal thing on Amazon, and I think it's kind of advantageous just to, well, ambush them. OK, so when you look up here, this is a train route from the 1900s for the Union Pacific train. With this, you're going to need a route, right? You need a route of where those shoppers are traveling to after they search, right? And when you come at your competition, and you come at stop a moving train, you can't like take it on with brute force. You're going to have to come in there, to be very strategic, 
You're going to kind of ambush your competition, kind of get started when no one's looking. So <laughs> visual example of what this looks like, a good example of an ambush. OK. You want to consistently get your products in front of as many buyers as possible, right? That's the goal here. And here's the secret. 20% of sales come off the search results. 80% of sales come off the product pages, right? So think about that number. So when you're looking at that, the majority of sales are going to come off your competitors' pages. If you're trying to sell on Amazon, Amazon makes it so easy to shop those pages that essentially what happens is people spend about 20% in search. They look at what they're, what they're trying to put together, what they're trying to find. If they don't find it in the search, they're going to be put on a product page where Amazon then loads up multiple products that are similar, multiple products that are alternative, right there for them to shop. And your goal is to make sure that your product is one of those products. The purchase decisions are not made in search. They're made on those product pages. That's how Amazon designed it, right? So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be increasing your visibility in search so people know your brand, they know your product, they know what you're doing. And then that's one click, right? Boom, boom. Then they're on the product pages shopping. So what you're going to do is you're going to increase your market perception by having your ads showing up on every page within the shopper's purchase path, right? So they're coming through the purchase path. They're not going back to the search results. Every page they navigate through, you're there again. And there you are again. And there you are again. And pretty soon, you'll see your sales conversions lift. And this is especially fun for those kind of mean, gnarly competitors that like to try to outbid you in your ad campaigns, or they, they outrank you in the search results. Because you let them pay for that single click on the keyword you want, and then you piggyback your ads all over their product pages. So it's kind of a nice game when they start to push back on bids. So how do you pick those placements? So if you're picking the ads or the pages you want your ads to show on, you're going to do three things, just like keywords. You're going to start by picking the product pages that have the highest sales velocity, right? The pages that actually get high sales. Second, you're going to look at the pages for your most important keywords that have really high organic rank or really high ad rank. Third, you're going to look for the products in the bestseller rank, products just that are ranked 1 through 10 you know they're popular, and they're getting the most visibility in the space, in your category. It's all about your category, right? So from there, you're going to take those three. They're going to overlap, and that's going to tell you what pages you advertise on. And then it looks like this. So you go ahead and you break down those ASINs, right? You start by looking at, OK, here's the best sellers. Here's organic. Here's the people in advertising. You see those ASINs. You go pick up their brands off their pages. And you bid, and you advertise, and you do it aggressively across the whole market. So this is a competitor in a campaign that one of my best clients it had like a sticky competitor that like came along, and he was, this competitor was constantly trying to take our bestseller badge and just do all kinds of funny stuff. And at the end of the day, you know, somewhere in the springtime, I decided that I would just kind of go after that competitor. And I took the badge, he never got it again, but I was kind of like, you know, something about that. I think I'm going to come back. So I went back to the pages, and I was really aggressive at this one competitor. And those top three arrows, those are sales that I have bled off of one ASIN. One competitor, one ASIN, that poor guy, I take a lot of his sales every day, all day. And that just leads to us, when I talk about that train, those are simply his sales coming to our page. I mean, those are our numbers. Those are our sales, right? So they're coming straight off a page. I track it. So there's one page we took those, and they came straight to us. So with Amazon, remember, you're simply moving that, moving that money around. OK. So this was the wildest member of the wild bunch. So with the ambush strategy, the, the competitors are always going to come. And instead, you want to get the drop on them before they get the drop on you, right? And advertising will allow you to do that. You want to hop on those product pages the second you see a competitor, you want to be all over their page. So even if they get you from one click, 
Even if they get one click ahead of you, they're only one click ahead of you before you blanket their product pages and take back your sales or take the sales you need to grow. Okay, so when most people bid on those you know, brand keywords, they're trying to land in the search results. Outlaw tip, you want to land on the product pages, sponsor products related to this item. Even product display is amazing, but you can still do it through sponsor products. Just anywhere on that page that is an ad unit you want to show up. Okay, the last step, we're going to blow the safe. So this one is really relates back to bold strategy, right? We want to have a really bold strategy. So this is uh, the Wilcox train robbery. The Wild Bunch pulled this off in 1899, and they blew the, the car open with some dynamite. It doesn't sound like much, but when you go back in history and you think these guys stopped a moving train and then blew it up you know, in the middle of nowhere, it's kind of wild. So to blow the safe, you're definitely going to need some dynamite. There's no way that you're going to come in and take a bestseller badge or take huge market without really pushing hard with velocity. So the single most important factor, the single most important factor to winning markets, and I like to win market share, right? That's the goal here. That's what advertising does. It takes market share, right? So the single most important factor to you being number one in your market is that the shopper sees that leadership. That's what shoppers do. Shoppers are out there looking and they're trying to see who is the leader, who is the best, because I want that. I mean, who isn't looking for the best, right? So when the shopper is out there, leadership is the most important signal that you can send. And because that is so true, you're going to find that 20% of sellers get 80% of sales. So your big picture goal is to win the best seller badge in your subcategory. Be very particular on picking that subcategory. Make sure it's especially relevant to your product. Take a look at it and make sure that you can win it. Just commit to winning it. Now, the thing about the best seller badge most people kind of get a little fuzzy on is, again, it's not just based on sales velocity. You can't just sell a bunch of stuff or move a bunch of units and win that little orange badge. It doesn't work that way. The best seller badge is actually based a lot on sessions, not just sales. So sessions are a little bit different, right? Those are, the, those are the number of people that come to visit your product page. So that's really where you're going to win. You're going to see a lot of growth in the badge. And the best seller badge is really the trick to a true competitive advantage. And I can only say this from the ad numbers. You guys saw those first screenshots? You guys saw the ones? I mean, the bestseller badge is what lifts. When you see those big jumps, we take the badge. You know, there's no question about it. When we take the badge, our sales conversions double, our ad costs go down, and it's a major competitive advantage. So don't ever short yourself in that bold strategy of not going for that little orange badge, because it's magic. So, the fastest way to take the badge that I have found is to advertise on your most high volume keywords. It will explode your sales, but more importantly, it will drive those sessions. So if you get like overly focused on the long tail and overly focused on the mid tail even at this point, those keywords are so targeted, you're not getting big volumes of people through your page. Where if you go with a keyword like we talked about earlier, you know, we're going to merge this up between sessions and sales, right? You've got to get a lot of sessions to the page, and then from there you convert those sessions to sales, and that's how you win the bestseller badge. So example earlier, we had bandana in the short tail, right? So we definitely want to go back, and we want to go back to this short tail turn. This is not where we start, but this is definitely where we finish. Right? You're not going to get as many conversions, but you're going to get a lot more sessions. There's a lot more traffic coming off this keyword to the page. So here's a good example of what that can do. So if you look at the numbers up here, you, you'll kind of see this is sort of sales highest to lowest. And, and you can see we did about you know, 400,000, that top campaign at 4% ACoS. That's our brand campaign. Those are all our brand searches that we've converted by running traffic for years. When I say we clients, I don't sell on Amazon. But next is we go in 
And then you can see a big keyword. We made a big move on a big keyword in Q4, the short tail. And we took about, I don't know, I can't see, maybe like 10,000 orders or 350K in sales. That's interesting. But then three months later, when I pulled those same numbers, now we've got about 750,000 in sales off one keyword, small bets, big moves. And, but you know, look at the campaign budget, big moves. But then look at the brand sales. We picked up another $300,000 in brand searches because by advertising on that short tail term, everybody kept seeing our brand. Everybody kept seeing our brand. Everybody kept coming to our page. Everybody, you know, and it just kept going and going. So you got to look at the whole picture with advertising. Don't let people like, just get you to look at like, ads and sales, ads and sales. You got to look at the whole picture. It's incredibly powerful in Amazon to leverage their advertising platform if you do it right. So yeah, this is the Sundance kid. He was the main holdup guy. OK, so the goal. You're going to capture market share, and then you're going to hold steady. That's the big deal with this, right? Advertising is a game where you get in there and you stick, right? You don't want to move back out. You don't want to do all this work and then kind of move away. You keep pressing, right? Keep pressing on the market. Keep pressing on the competitors. Keep pressing on your keywords. And that's how you see that kind of scale and growth. Because Amazon is incredible in the sense that it does grow so much right now that even with implied demand on a certain keyword, you can still see the numbers grow over time. So you can leverage their growth, but the only way to do that is if you just lock and hold. Lock and hold. Stay in those markets. Don't be scared of your competitors. OK, so when you do get started, you get started doing this, and you start you know, raising a big fuss. You're all over the search results, and you're all of your competitors' pages. and some people are going to start chasing you, right? And let's get real. So this is the Union Pacific Posse that came after the Wild Bunch after they robbed the Wilcox train. The Posse is going to always be there. I mean, you're just going to have more competitors. Your competitors might think they're going to get meaner until they tangle with you, and they'll stop. But you're going to always have people coming. There's no question about it, right? Always going to be looking over your shoulder on Amazon. But the beauty of this strategy the beauty of advertising is even though we know these new competitors are going to be on the horizon, we also know that we're going to keep powering our sales and our velocity to keep them far in the distance, right? They're not going to be nearly as threatening to you if you have the drop on them. They're not going to be nearly as threatening to you if you're continually putting so much distance between you and the next competitor. You put so much distance there. And the person that's trying to come in and compete with you, you've got the kind of velocity I'm showing you today. Like, I mean, come on. How, I mean, it's so, you put so much space there that it makes your business so much easier, right? And that's the idea. You've got to get away at the loot. We don't want to rob a train and then have to wake up the next day and rob another train, right? You want to get away with it a bit. So the best way to do that, the very best way to do that is definitely to keep yourself ahead of the pack and to do it very strategically so that when people talk about competition, you're like, I have competition. I know all their names. I know them very well. <laughs> I work with them every day. So then you can uh, ride off into the sunset with an awesome business. Thank you, guys. All right, so we've got a few minutes, so we can do some Q&A. If you have any questions, a good opportunity because it's a super specific topic. So if you have any specific questions about uh, you know, advertising on Amazon, definitely let's do it now. Uh, we've got a few minutes. Yeah, come up to these microphones, by the way. So we got two right here, so I see a hand raised. Hi, that was an awesome presentation. Thank you so much. Yeah, so um, for those of us, I'm sure there's plenty of people in the audience thinking this, like, <laughs> You're obviously very good at what you do, and you make it sound very simple. But yes. when it comes into the actual tactical getting in there and, and building out these ads and researching all the sure. ASINs, is there any more like deep dive training that we can go to or someone that we can hire? Either one of those would be fine. Um, I think you know what you really want to do, and this is an awesome question. I think, honestly, what I do, and I mean, I do this for a living, I think you really, the best place to do research and to kind of get this tactical thing is, is within your market, 
Mm -hmm. So go, like whatever product you're thinking about selling, you want to do that research and you want to understand the keywords that are being searched and you want to understand, you know, the competitors that are in the space. And then from there, you can kind of, you can kind of build it out. And that's the cool thing. You don't really need tactics and you really just need that kind of view as you're putting it together to think very structured. Mm -hmm. And essentially you're going to make small bets, right? So start with the keywords, you know, start with 10 keywords, literally, right. and then just make sure you're ranking on those keywords and keep it very organized. Um, you know, there's definitely, I do occasionally will teach on that and I think there's stuff in the market on that, but I think that you're going to learn most by diving into your market and diving into your keywords before you get any tactics. Right. Because I think the tactics are good, but they only last so long. Like I could give you guys tactics, like, you know, this is my flow and I use different tactics all the time, but the tactics kind of change over time because not everything works every single day the same. So. The one thing I have found that is, is consistent is, is just that, that research phase, spending that time in those keywords, spending those time on those pages, looking at those you know, auto searches and really understanding how your market is searching and right. buying and who is competing with you, really competing with you. And then you jump in and it won't matter how you structure the campaigns. I'm telling you honestly, it won't matter what you do. If you have the right targets, mm -hmm. you'll win. Cool. Thank yeah. You. Thank you so much. With that said, I think we are going to try to wrangle her in to do some training, so <laughs> hopefully we have that coming. All right, we'll jump over here. Yeah, that was definitely awesome. So when it comes to like go all in on those keywords that you are selecting, yes. yeah. basically raise the bid price, raise your budget for the day, just Heck go yeah. all Big the way. Moves. Just That's go. it. You, you can't make, you make small bets though. Don't go in and dump like a thousand keywords from like some auto ASIN tool. Not that those tools are bad. Pull that ASIN tool, but, but you filter those down to a very clean list, right? It's not a small bet to throw a thousand keywords into a campaign. I don't make that bet. So you don't want to do that, right? So, so you want to come in there and you pick good, like your 10 best targets based on your own market intelligence, based on your own looking at it all. And then from there, yeah, you put big moves on this. All right. Open up the budget. That's that big move. Open up the budget. Open up the bid. You're trying to show up on page one. Build your visibility. Build those sales. Great. Right. Thank you very much. Yes, of course. Thank you so much. All right, yeah, we'll just keep alternating back and forth. Okay. So over here. I'll be running. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my question is just at what point um, mm -hmm. do you want to start your advertising strategy and at what budget? Like, Good call. As, as a, you know, small time <laughs> seller. You're like, well, if I had a million dollars laying yeah, around, sure. yeah, right? And trust me, sometimes I'm blown away by the numbers. Um, you really can start small. I mean, you really can. And, and, and the best place to start is to do those small bets. So you want to start advertising after you have maybe 20 reviews and you have a little bit of sales traction and you have an understanding of your market and you have some sales and some reviews that's starting to pick up a little bit. And, and the thing to remember with that 80-20 principle is like only, you know, two out of 10 products will stick. It's really true, even for me. I mean, I'm a maverick and I could maybe stick three out of 10 if I'm having a good day. Like, not every product is gonna scale and not every product is gonna hit it off with people. You know, there's market, there's competitors, there's pricing. So, so, so you, you'll get about two out of three out of every 10 that'll really stick. So my suggestion is you get those reviews and then you test your products incrementally with maybe a $50 a day budget and you see which ones stick. And then you make the big move. If you, those, you find the one that sticks, shut the ones down that don't stick and put 100 on the one that sticks. And then you start making a little bit of money from that and you put 500 on the one that sticks. And then before you, you know, you just keep sticking it. And you just keep like upping the bid. Well, you don't have to up the bid, you have to up the budget, right? You keep well. scaling your budget as you go. But the main thing is you want to plug anything that's not working for you. So just make sure you're putting all your money on the good bet, you know? Yeah, thank you. All right, cool. Over here. Hi, Shree. Hello. Um, I have been observing ASM for about four years, and Matt, by the way, I, I need to talk to you. Uh, I'm with Wealth Factory. Oh, sweet. Gotta say hello. Yeah, cool. Um, I've been, I, I launched a product in October. It's a toy uh -huh. product, so it did fantastic okay. in Christmas time. I was doing like 45 a day. Okay, I'm okay. I'm doing two a day right now. Okay. And I think my ad is just like messed up. I think I have too many keywords in any one campaign. And so yeah. what I saw up there was there was a ton of manual campaigns. All manual. Are they all one keyword per campaign? They or are they not one. No, 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 no. Good question. Good question. <clears throat> you could do, if you're doing, any of you guys advanced out there doing AMS, you could do one keyword in those. Those will win. But in sponsor products, no. You don't do one keyword. Your keywords, are you pulling them out of your search term report? Uh-huh. Okay. And then what else is in there then? Are you, I mean, where are these keywords you're targeting coming from? Uh, they're largely just from organic, uh, you know, just personal review of, I know this product needs these keywords, and yeah. I pulled them from the automatic campaign that I've had running. 
Mm -hmm. um, so there's like maybe 15 to 20 keywords in a, in a manual campaign, and I'm okay. getting maybe traction on five or six of them. That's about right. Um, have you peeled those five or six out into their own group, maybe, right? No. Do that. Okay. <laughs> Do so that. take the best ones into... Into their own group. Okay. Yeah, I call that group scale. And so... I like scale. And, so take the ones out and put it in, in their own group, and then up that, you know, up that ad group bid, uh -huh. and then let those keywords all run in that group. Okay. And you build some history. Make sure you're bidding high enough, though, that, you know, not you're, you're getting, are you ranking on the first page? Are you checking those keywords for that? Mm -hmm. and, and then maybe go and do a little keyword research like we're talking about here yeah. versus trusting the auto tool to hand you the best ones. Okay. I'd look at that a little so, bit. Uh, and I'd be pulling those competitors a little Several keywords, you know, maybe 10 or 20 on temporarily until you find which ones work, then move them into a Move your search term report keywords campaign. every month. But what's the problem that you might be having, I can see it, is you started with an auto campaign, so you mm -hmm. may not have the right keyword seeds. So like, for example, let's go back to bandana. So, so like, for example, if I had, um, maybe the auto campaign dished up Paisley bandana in black and it didn't dish up red, and that's like my best seller keyword, but it didn't mm -hmm. give that to me. So I am gonna put in that main scale ad group, you could do what match types, you're gonna go ahead and set it as phrase, broad and exact, test it out. You want to make sure you're mining. Don't just bid on exact match. Because okay. the search term reports are only going to take variations of that keyword, and you need those variations to scale. Hmm. Does that make sense? I think so. <laughs> you're like, I think so. You're like, no, I think so. I'm still new enough that, yeah, I'm trying to figure it all out. <laughs> I know, right? Advertising. That's why I went so fast. I didn't want to overwhelm you guys, you know? And now I'm like, wow. Um, yeah, so, so my suggestion is to get the good ones in their own group, okay. to make sure you're ranking on what's important, to, to do some research on what keywords really matter and get those in, into that campaign as phrase and broad match. Mm -hmm. And then read your search term report every 30 days and pull any like match types out, you know, other new keywords that might be doing good. All right. Thanks and so much. And you can email me, Sheree at the Urban Cowgirl. I will. Email me and I'll answer those <laughs> questions and make sure you get it. Excellent. <laughs> Absolutely. <Thank you. laughs> all right, over here. How are you getting on all your competitors' product pages? Yes, target their brands, target yeah. their product names, right? Yeah. That's it. You just target them, and you, you just make sure that you bid aggressively enough that you're showing up and those sponsored products related. Keep testing your bid. You said on the keyword, though, not to do that. They're more on their product pages. So besides product display ads and hoping you get there with the Oh, no, product display is good, but you could do just as well in sponsored products. So sponsored products, okay, so you're going down the product page. And you have product display right under the buy box. Yeah. And then you have a banner right under the thing. But then you keep going, and everyone's going to scroll to get to those reviews. So below that, you have two tables of sponsored product ads. Okay. So it's, and it looks to a buyer, to a shopper, it looks a lot like customers who bought this also bought this. Right? It looks and almost brand, identical. Brand keywords will put you on those placements. Uh -huh, brand and product. So brand look at, go peel their page, right? That's what I'm saying. It's all market research. You're yeah. not really, you don't need to pull, this is really you. Eyeballs on the page. This is strategy, right? You got to case the train. So when you get in there, you take that product page and you peel all the unique keywords off of it. You know, however they mention their product, what they talk about the brand, things that are really unique to that product. Put those in a single ad group. Name it as the competitor. And bid till you see yourself gotcha. there. Cool, thank yeah, you. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Just a quick follow-up uh, sure, sure. to his question. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, can you also add ASINs to it? No, it doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. No, so. ASINs you can do directly in product display, though. So if you're doing AMS, right. not, but I, I have to say, you guys, I get 80% of my sales out of sponsored products. And I love AMS, and I love AMG, and I work with those teams a lot inside of Amazon, but I love sponsored products. I mean, I have to look at the numbers. That's what I care about, right? right, right. So I get 80% of sales out of sponsored products. But... You are, when you do get into AMS, which is their more advanced platform, you could target by ASIN, but it's almost as little more effective to be in sponsored products related. So we see like our ACOS might be 15, 20% for sponsored or headline ads, but for product ads, it goes up to like 40%. It should, 45, should. Exactly. Sometimes 35, 45, it's a competitor. It's gonna be a little higher, let me tell you that too. So if you're looking at keywords and ACOS in your campaigns, it's a great question. Um, you're going to have, like, your most targeted keywords will be, you know, your best ACOS. Uh, your competitors' keywords are the most expensive to buy, without question. 40, 45% ACOS doesn't scare me, but I can usually keep it at 35 if I'm aggressive. But if my client even winces at 45, I'm like, we're not stopping. <laughs> <laughs> we're not done. There's a lot more sales to bleed off this page. So, yeah, it's a little bit higher. That's not you screwing up. That's just because it takes a little more effort to, to get those people to come and buy your stuff. But it's worth it in the end, Thank right? You. Uh, Thank definitely. you. 
So great talk. I really enjoyed it. Um, Thank you. I think where a lot of the confusion for me came in was a oh, little no. bit in terms of elaborating on some of the structure, right? So yes, okay. you know, for example, say we're talking about water bottles, right? Yeah. Okay. So water bottle might be, you know, the the broad, you know, highest search volume keyword. Yes. But then maybe you have like the mid would be like a red water bottle. And then, you know, obviously the long term. So are you suggesting like you would start with a campaign that has like red water bottle and like red stainless steel water bottle and, and have just some of those long term one, long tail ones? No, I'm talking about the mid tail. Yeah. So you're like the keyword dude. I think I've seen you. So you're asking me like, OK, where's my keyword structure? OK, so if you're doing that, it's like stainless steel. I know, I'm just like this guy. I know, he's going to ask me a tough question. Um, okay, so if you're talking about the water bottle, you might have red water bottle, then you might have stainless steel water bottle, and then you might have, give me another mm. mid-tail. Um, plastic water bottle. Well, obviously, have, if you're in metal, you wouldn't. But you but, would. Yeah. You could. You could yeah. be a seller that has, Mike, you could be a seller that has a plastic version, mm -hmm. a metal version, right? So yes, you're, and you make sure, that's another reason modifiers are powerful. So when I showed you that example of the bandana, you've got the red bandana, the paisley bandana, the black bandana, the face bandana, you want to link people to those variations of the product. That's why you're using the modifier. So if that wasn't clear in the structure, let me clarify that more. Um, and that would be one campaign? Um, so yeah, you can, no, I do my modifiers. If I have a product that has significant modifiers, like let's just talk about homewares and you got colors. So like if you were out there selling towels and you had purple and pink and blue, those are all separate campaigns for me. So if it's a tiny niche and the modifiers aren't huge, it can go in one campaign. But if I'm going after a big market with a lot of modified searches, yeah, I separate those in their own campaigns. Mm -hmm. And then same thing with like the brand. So like if you had hydro flask water bottle, that would be a campaign and you would target like hydro flask and you would target hydro flask water bottle. And That's right. Hi okay. If hydro flask was a competitor, am mm -hmm. I getting that right? Yeah. If hydro flask is a competitor that has his own campaign, it's named after him because it's special. We're just taking his sales. Got it. So yeah, so you're going to name it that. And then um, if it's your product brand, that goes in its own campaign too. Got it. So your own campaign for all your brand stuff Okay. so that you can really track that got because it. sometimes you got to remind yourself how much money you're making. Like, when you get 4% ACOS on 700,000 in sales, right? Cool. Sometimes you need a wake up call that, you know, hey, this is building my brand. And so I like to have a brand campaign, maybe because I have to give my clients wake up calls. So. Is that at a product level though? So um, like you'd have a brand campaign for each individual product? Such a good question, such a good question. With me, here's my strategy on brand campaign. If I have a brand campaign, I have a lot of ASINs, which my clients do. Usually we only have a few that are really in the bestseller rank, right? So. I only advertise my brand on the ASINs that really rock and roll, that really hit the bestseller. I don't want to dilute, you know, if I'm paying for those brand searches, I want them to go to my best-selling products. I just, that's just going to be easier. So for me, I would pick your best-selling product on the brand searches because it's going to be more profitable and you're going to get better sales velocity, better history. So for me, I, I pick the product that sells best. I don't want all my products like, sham, you know, like a random kind of, you know, circus of like, well, maybe you'll see this product today, maybe this one tomorrow. I just want my winner all the Got time, it. you know, so okay. I push it to critical mass. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, right, cool. Last question. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, great. So it's a two-part question really sure. quickly. One thing, do you target the brands in sponsored ads? Like, would you... Say ninja spatula. You bet. Would you target that? Okay. And if they call their spatula a ninja Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's Mike's brand. <laughs> oh, I was like, okay, Mike, I'm coming for you. So watch out. Okay, so ninja spatula. Ninja spatula, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would do ninja spatula. And then if they have this like ninja bifold black spatula, I right. would target that too. And then okay. if they have this thing where we have a spatula special thing, I target that too. Anything on their product page that differentiates, it seems unique, that goes in the group. Perfect. And it kind of builds, and that's another thing you guys got to keep in mind there. And you know, being a keyword guy, the thing to keep in mind there is that the algorithm isn't as, isn't a linear thinker. So the algorithm is linear at times, but it's also a relational thinker. So the algorithm is going to look at a group of keywords, and if they relate contextually, likes that. Right? So if you put a lot of different things from that brand page, you get a little contextual advantage, you know, if you talk about everything on the page versus just the brand, just the brand, just the brand. The algorithm sees the brand interesting. The algorithm sees all these unique queries that just relate to that one page in its index, and it says, oh, this must be about this. And you're like, yes, it is. It's about stealing sales from this page. So, yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Just the okay. second part. Sure. Um, 
So if I'm targeting silicone spatula. Yes. It's going to be an expensive keyword. It is. And, and it's going to have a really high ACOS. Yes. So at the beginning, how, what, what's your personal tolerance? Like if, if I'm targeting it and it's 85% ACOS, no. would you hold it for a few weeks? Would you see I it? I would hold. It depends on how many clicks and how many sales and, and, and how much velocity I was getting from it. But I don't normally hold any keyword over 60% for any length of time. You got to just how, kill how them. How long would you leave it until you see that? Two um, weeks? Three let's weeks? see. No, you don't worry about time. Look at the clicks. So I, okay. I like to look like 30 clicks. Okay. Um, I think 30 clicks. And then also, if you get one sale and that one sale costs you, like, you got to wait till you get to two sales to be conclusive. Two sales. And sometimes I can make decisions because Amazon converts so high. Yeah, 30 clicks. Awesome. Yes, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. All right. Let's give a huge hand to Sheree. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it.